This option is available for all controllers running TLS 1.2 encryption, regardless of Secure 9000 version or iStar firmware version. You can select controller-based certificate mode or host-based certificate mode. Ensure you can access the iStar webpage. This needs to be done for every controller in TLS 1.2 mode in your system. If you need to update the iStar password, navigate to the controller in the hardware tree. Right-click on the controller and click Edit. Click Set Password. Enter a new password. Click OK and Save and Close. Ensure all controllers are online by navigating to Data Views, then Dynamic Views. Right-click on the Dynamic View and click Pop-up View. This will display the online status and encryption status of all controllers. Now you must verify that the system variable auto sign certificate non-FIPS is set to true. Navigate to Options and Tools, then System Variables. Locate the auto sign certificate non-FIPS variable, and if it is false, set to true. You must stop and restart the iStar driver service for the system variable changes to take effect. In the admin station, on the options and tools pane, click encryption options. Select host-based encryption mode. Click yes, then click save and close. Use the monitoring station and iStar dynamic view to verify the new certificate is generated and downloaded to each controller. The messages you will see will vary depending on whether you have selected host-based or controller-based. The S-Tunnel service will be restarted and the controller should reboot. This process could take some time depending on how many controllers you have. When the controller comes back online, you will see the updated certificate date from the iStar dynamic view. Verify all iStar controllers are back online and communicating. If a controller does not come back online, or if you want to add new controllers to the system, refer to the KB article, iStar Controller Encryption Recovery Procedures on the Software House Support Portal.